Hi, my name is TC Johnson, and I'm the director of the Impact documentary film Rising from Ashes. It was released several years ago, was executive produced by Forrest Whitaker. It won 19 out of 30 film festivals, played all over the world through international and U.S. distribution, the whole thing. But what most people don't know is that they don't know the backstory. How did a film like that come to be? And it actually started with the short film called Wheels of Mercy that has never been released publicly. Now, 18 years later, we're going to show you that film. And there'll also be a separate video coming out uh, alongside of this of the director's commentary of what was happening behind the scenes of this movie that actually moved it from Wheels of Mercy to uh, becoming Rising from Ashes. If you like this video at the end, please like and subscribe. We're growing a YouTube channel. Enjoy the film. More than 50% of my reason to come here is because of the stories of, of, um, of healing and uh, of reconciliation that I've heard about. I think mountain biking brings some people together. It gives a reason, it's a platform by which to communicate and get to know one another. If we were able to show common average individuals and reputable people like Tom Ritchie and the bike industry and so forth, biking or doing whatever in Rwanda and get it on film and document it. It's an incredible platform by which to tell the Rwandan story. Rwanda's biggest struggle is the fact that people think it's untouchable. They think it's dangerous. And um, it's a complete misnomer. It's one of the safest countries in Africa. It's so different than anything I've ever experienced in, in a culture and a people. go ride and relate, even though I, the bike is going to be the communication tool. You come over here and you think, what are you going to experience? What are you going to see in cycling? It's like being in a stage in the Tour de France, just about everywhere you go. And these smiles and these, these faces were just enough to blow you over. And to have hours and hours of that was, was just an incredible gift. If someone brings something new to me, I always research it for myself. And it was fascinating to find out how small Rwanda is. 140 miles wide, size of Maryland, 8 million people. And I found out it was, they call it the land of a thousand hills. And as we've been riding through the countryside, anywhere we, we go, faces look up and these beautiful smiles and these radiant eyes just peek out from everywhere. So we're seeing what their culture is all about. Every steel bike that you see here is pretty, pretty standard, pretty basic, one speed coaster brake. It, it's been repaired over and over and over. When you can't afford a bike, you make a bike. And this is fascinating. They make a wood bike. Check this out, <laughs> I've man. never Look seen this. They make these labor utility push bikes 
that I got a chance to ride one yesterday and I go, golly, this is amazing. They push it uphill. It's got wooden wheels with a strip of rubber on it. It's got some funky wooden head tube angled at a certain angle that's 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 part of being nailed together in a in a in a bunch of probably you know grease or whatever they put in there, avocado to keep the thing lubricated. <laughs> The adventure side of me is still strong. I definitely, um, I want to go where the bike is, and the bike is is a tool, and the bike is used uh, by culture, and I want to experience um, that culture, and I, I want to experience the, the areas of the world that are that are rideable, which is the rest of the world. We showed up at this stadium and uh, everyone attacked us and, and uh, grabbed our bikes and started riding it. The concerns and warnings about coming to Rwanda were definitely real because the, their history is so, so tragic. This is the uh, one of many sites where the church was used in a, in a way that is beyond imagination to bring people in as a cloak of safety and to, to murder them. The bodies inside are still on the floor. As I ride this week and as I look in the face of people that survived this, it's going to mean something to me. I'm dulled by it now. We just visited the uh, regional hospital clinic. There was a lot of need here, but I didn't realize how they're they're meeting it, and there's great um, competency in the people that you meet. But uh, there's still such a great need beyond that. Regardless of any trip like this, there's no way getting around the fact that we're getting way more out of it than anything that we could ever have brought to the table. And I think that will forever be, no, no matter how much engagement we provide here in Rwanda. Uh, that's kind of the neat duality in, in giving, is that the giver actually typically gets more than the, than the receiver. And I think you learn that 
at a deeper level when you're here in Rwanda. This is a this is a place that requires a lot of connections, a lot of of understanding of the culture, a lot of you can't take anything for granted, and uh, hardly anything went wrong to this point. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah, we still have a helicopter ride. For me personally, at this point in my life, looking for the face of that, that reconciliation and forgiveness is, um, is really important to me. Any country that has suffered as much as this country has and is committed to new beginnings the way that they are um, is an experience that I wanted to experience and that's why I'm here.